Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 25, and today we're talking about the Bit Crusher. That can be found in the FX tab on the drop down list, second row, second module. And for this demonstration, I am using an analog engine with a sine wave, and let's take a listen to see what we hear. Just a sine wave. Now on this module, we have three knobs, the dry wet, which you should be familiar with by now, mixing the dry input signal with the wet affected output signal. Now down here where it says down sample, let's take a listen and see what happens. Now the most interesting thing is you're gonna hear that low end tone come in. So let's take a listen to that again, turn up the volume just a bit here and do that again. So that's called aliasing what's happening here. Now, in case you didn't know, to reproduce a waveform exactly as it came in and exactly as it goes out, it has to be sampled at at least double the frequency of that sound. So that being said, right now we are in 44.1, and what that means is every single second, the signal is gonna be sampled 44,100 times. Now, when we drag this knob, it's gonna reduce that by a total of 80. So times 80, so a multiplier in that sense. Introducing aliasing. Now it's a, kind of a complicated topic and I might do a video separate about that, but a very good analogy that kind of maybe knocks this point home is let's say you're filming something at 30 frames per second. Maybe you're filming a tire moving or the blades of a helicopter moving. And in this situation, let's say every, se or every uh, second that thing's gonna be moving 30 times. So if you're filming that at 30 frames per second, it's gonna kind of look like it's not really moving. And the difference is, let's say it goes a little bit faster, sometimes it might look like it's gonna be going the opposite direction, or it's gonna be slowing down, speeding up. That's the kind of visual effect of what's happening in aliasing. So yeah, a lot, little bit of uh, extra information in case you didn't know, but I might revisit that topic a little bit later. So moving on to bit depth. So right now this is 16 bits. And a little bit of information behind that is a 16 bit audio file has 65,536 amplitude quantization values. So if that doesn't necessarily make sense, um, I might do that again, maybe a video on sampling and bit depth by itself. However, let's take a listen and see what that sounds like. turn this down because it gets kind of loud. And let's see what happens if we do this with a saw wave. It's a little bit more interesting here. Let's turn this down just a little bit more. And you can visually see these quantization levels. So that's basically the sound of a bit crusher. So in a nutshell, some of the technical stuff, 16 bit audio, 65,536 unique values that you can have, eight bits, 256. So the more you go past eight here, it's gonna be quite, uh, quite crushed. And even not really necessarily looking at this oscilloscope here, this visual demonstration is very interesting too because all the way at the right, we can see these different levels of quantization here. And as we drag it, now we have that many, that many, you can count them if you'd like to. But rest assured, if you're at eight bit here, uh, let's go right about here, you're gonna have 256 different levels of quantization all the way to 16 bit, which is gonna be, like I said, 65,536. So. Hopefully this uh, kind of maybe demystified the bit crusher a little bit. I know it's a little bit more technical than I intended it to be, but I thought I'd mention it because the interface looks so simple, but behind these two knobs, there's a lot of theory and a lot of DSP knowledge behind that. So yeah, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.